In Robert Robertson's final days on death row, he's getting visits from a man who helped put him there. I will be forever haunted by my participation, his arrest and prosecution. He is an innocent man. Brian Wharton was the lead detective in 2002 who investigated the death of Robertson's two-year-old daughter. He's now among the many advocates, attorneys, and medical professionals trying to prove Robertson did not shake the little girl to death. Our investigation of Nikki's death did not turn up signs of violence in Nikki's home. Nikki herself did not have the appearance of a beaten child, but the CAT scan of her head led to the pronouncement of those three awful words, shaken baby syndrome. Shaken baby syndrome first emerged as a medical hypothesis in the 1970s, and in the decades since, crash tests and impact studies have led some courts to conclude it's junk science. Doctors now understand there are many other things that can trigger this distinctive type of head trauma. And today, we know that all of Nikki's symptoms can be explained by severe undiagnosed pneumonia, improper medications that were prescribed by her doctors, and an accidental fall likely precipitated by her illness. Across the country, at least 21 people have had their shaken baby convictions overturned or their charges dismissed since 2019. And in Arizona, there were cases dropped even earlier than that. Many courts have been receptive to exonerating individuals who have been convicted on shaken baby evidence. Arizona-based public defender Carrie Sandman thinks the Robertson case could send a signal. He'd be the first person in the country executed for a shaken baby conviction. I certainly hope that the mistake that Texas appears to be about to make is not going to be influential in any other courts around the country. Robert Robertson's execution is set for October 17th, unless the governor or the courts there intervene. Here in Arizona, there are still people serving time based on a shaken baby syndrome diagnosis. The Arizona Justice Project says it's reviewing at least three cases that they think could be candidates for exoneration. Jared? Derek Stahl in the newsroom. Thanks, Derek.